friends and welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. This week in the studio we are making a new bag and having some fun with some crochet projects so come along. I can't believe it's October already. <laughs> uh, we've only got a few more bag patterns we can do in the year of bags. We are definitely doing bags next year too. Um, I don't know what we're doing next year besides um, just making stuff of course because I love to make stuff and hopefully you do too or at least you love to watch people make stuff that's why you're here so uh, thank you for coming and thank you for spending time with me I really appreciate it and just a reminder that next week I'm gonna be on vacation so no no video next week and then the week after that you will come back to a travel video so hope you will join me for those and we're also going to be doing vlogmas in December so I hope you join me for that as well so let's take a look at our pattern for the week we have the Alice purse by Sotac designs I gave it a B plus plus I have made it once before um, I like sticking with her denim idea I don't know why it just looks better in denim to me so we're gonna be doing that I also like the way she kind of does some quilting lines at the bottom for stability. So I'm going to be doing that. We've got two zippers here. It's a magnetic snap closure and then I think we have a zipper pocket on the inside. If there isn't I'm going to put one because I think it needs it. And then the bag is 11 by 10 by 3 and a half. So a really nice size bag for on the go. So we're going to use a nice dark deep denim for this one. And then we've got our outside fabric. Is this really cool kind of modern art fabric. And we're pairing it with, what is this one, mustard. We're pairing it with the mustard grunge fabric. You know that Moda grunge fabric that I love so much that just adds some texture. We will also be stuffing our sachets this week and then pinking the edges. Um, I wanna get this done this week just so that I know if I need to order more lavender uh, lavender blossoms, I have time to do that. And then we have a new project. So here's one of the project bags that I've made in the past. This is my prototype, very cute, and it's fall. I totally forgot I had a fall project bag. So this one is a bucket, bucket bag, obviously. It's got that with a little handle, and it's got a drawstring top. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I find the drawstring top gets in the way, so I don't know that I will be making these as far as like for the shop, but I do love the idea of the bucket. Not very realistic. Okay, so we are starting on the Segway shawl. Yay! So we got our yarn. I have started with the first color. Let me pull this out so I don't lose it. Started with the first color. If it looks wonky, it's supposed to. We do uh, we do three double crochets and then we switch to three half double crochets here. So it kind of goes downhill a little bit. It's really pretty in this yarn. This is what it was supposed to look like <laughs> the whole time. It kind of has this nice flower pattern. Just from doing the three doubles and the three half doubles. So that's pretty cool. But as you can see here, it has these little wings, little bat wings that we're gonna do throughout the pattern. Here's a better picture of it. So that's what it's gonna look like. I don't know how I'm gonna block this because I barely had room to block the rectangle sweater, um, let alone this has to be blocked in a very specific way, which she goes over in the video, which I'm happy she added that to the video. Um, but yeah, that'll be very interesting when we get to that point. Um, the first time I tried making this, I got off on the numbering or the counting, so I was super particular. I've been counting every row so far to make sure that my foundation is correct, that I have the right number before I switch over to the half doubles, so that that's all correct, so we don't have the problem we had last time, because I want this to be perfect, of course. So, looking forward to that. This will definitely be road trip material. I might start the Christmas scarf as well to work on that in the car um, since we do have so much 
car time and then I don't really have a lot planned for the vacation we're just staying at like a little beach cottage so hopefully going to the beach every day uh, I don't know what the weather's going to be like and then hanging out watching movies crocheting just doing some nice downtime because our last few vacations have been go 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 so it's nice to have a vacation where you don't do a lot we will be right next to Cambria my favorite town so I'm sure we'll head up there and take a look at that they have the um, Scarecrow Festival going on in October so I'll walk you around and we'll take a look at all the cute scarecrows we'll go to the French French bakery we'll look around the um, the antique store again and just yeah maybe take a day out for that and then we'll be heading up to Napa Valley so I don't know what it's gonna look like up there or if I'll be able to film anything but I'm sure I will take you guys around somewhere hopefully I would love to have time to do the wine train or something but I don't know you know it all depends on how much downtime there is we do have a, we will have a car so maybe other people might want us to drive them somewhere but we'll see so I'm hoping to get most things done this week so that the um, the craft fairs are all set and ready to go and we can relax and just enjoy our vacation and knowing everything's gonna be ready for us when we come back so go ahead and grab a water or a cozy beverage curl up on your couch and let's make this bag Okay, so we've got them all sewn together now, and I'm gonna pink the edges. Uh, my husband said this is first priority when you get home on Friday night because they smell. <laughs> They're very overwhelmingly powerful as a group, you know, and they've been sitting here for a couple of days now. So first priority for the weekend <laughs> is to get these done so I can put them in a Ziploc bag and they will not be smelling up the whole kitchen any longer. So I'm gonna do these until my hand hurts, which probably isn't gonna to take too long. I mean, before my hand hurts, it, the thing itself is gonna take a long time. So I'm gonna put on the TV, get these all cut, and get them in a Ziploc bag. Now, we had this problem with the other one, and I'm not sure what our solution is here, other than separating them and cutting the rest. Mm, it's difficult to line up. Okay. That kind of works, I guess. That's really difficult. Very, very difficult to do. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. And I will approach it from the other side. In this direction. Yeah, that's the only problem with having the um, the things in here is that this is just going to be a mess. Just going to take extra time to cut these. But it is super cute. So one down, a lot to go. Okay, here we go. Um, I feel like this denim's a little dark, but 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna go really quick and look for another piece of denim because this is this is really dark compared to these two bright fabrics, and it might just be too much. Um, what I'm gonna do on the outside is use our yellow zipper because we've got this nice yellow here in the pattern, and then I'm gonna use a pink zipper on the inside because it'll be against this mustard color. We're gonna use our circle pulls on the outside for a little decorative touch. We've got a magnetic snap and then our one inch hardware. Um, the last one I made just had the rectangles and I wanted this one to be detachable because we've got two, two types of handles here. We've got our regular handles and then we've got this adjustable strap. And I would like that adjustable strap to be detachable. So we're going to use D-rings and can, um, swivel clasps to put that strap on. Okay, so I'm looking at my denim. This is the lighter color I was thinking of, but there's really not enough of this left for this large of a purse. I mean, these pieces are going to be huge. Plus we've got the bottom and the handles and everything. I might make the handles out of this, although I do like the strap being nice and dark. Um, I'm just not going to be using a lot of that. The thing I like about this is that it's real denim. It's actually thick denim, which I think adds a lot to this bag um, for stability wise because we're not really doing any foam here. Uh, I think we do fusible fleece. Yeah, we're doing fusible fleece because uh, she's using denim, so it doesn't really need to be that thick. It does stand up on its own with the fusible fleece and the denim, so I like that. We do have this piece, but it's not actually thick. So it's like super thin. It's more just like cotton material that looks like denim. So I'm wondering what to do here. Um, I like this color. I do like this color with that, but I feel like we're going to need more thickness. So what we can do is we can do fusible fleece on the exterior and the interior. That would bulk it up some. We could do fusible fleece and Decoville. Only problem with that is I don't know that those will both stick to the same piece of fabric. So maybe we do Decoville on the interior. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or I could do foam, but it's not really a foam purse. Um, I have another tote bag that uses like craft fuse and like a double layer of that. So I'm gonna get that pattern out and see how we do that because that's like a nice stiff exterior without using foam. So maybe we can do that instead and then we could use this because I've got a huge piece of this. Nice and big. Okay, so we haven't done an Aloha tote. I only did one when that was one of the first bags I made in my bag making class. So, gotta find that one. And that would be the Aloha. So, it's a very good simple tote, but it does have like these three panels, which I really like. So that's what we're gonna do for that. So we use Decor Bond. Uh, we used it on the, okay. So we use the Decor Bond on the exterior and the interior to give it that shape. Um, what I might wanna do is use Decor Bond or Decoville Light on the interior and use, I do like the little, um, I do like the, the plush feel of the fusible fleece. So I think we'll use the fusible fleece on the exterior and we'll just, I'll see if I have any decor bond left that we can do for the interior because I believe the decor, decor bond is a little lighter weight than the um, Decoville. Let's, let's take a look and see. Okay, so the Decor Bond is definitely lighter than the Decoville Light. Um, it just adds a little stiffness in there, 
without adding a lot of bulk and I have a ton of it. So I think we're good to go for that. So I will keep that out for this. And now I feel like we can get started. My only problem is, is that the lining obviously isn't as dark as that and this isn't as dark as that. But I do want the silver hardware. We could also just do the pink zippers for everything. So I guess the real question is, we should audition the zippers. So that's what that would look like. And then that's what that would look like. It does kind of look too light, doesn't it? I kind of like the pink for all three. Well then, do we have enough pink zipper? We need two six inches and one eight inch. So we got 12 inches. Oh yeah, we got plenty of pink. Okay, so let's stick with the pink for all of it. Here we are again. Okay, so we've done all the normal things. We've made the D-ring holders. We've made the adjustable strap. We've made the handles. So all the stuff you've seen a million times before. The two things that are different about this pattern are this front zipper idea and then the bottom. I did the SF-101, I did a little piece of decor bond, and we're doing the, the fusible fleece just to give it some more oomph. So then what we're going to do is we're going to press these under, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do several lines of stitching, kind of like we're quilting this, just to give it that extra stability and a nice little touch. So. That's pretty easy. It's this part that's difficult. So what we have to do first of all is we have to make this big wide strip. So we're going to get our exterior pieces and our little pocket piece out here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a pocket in the front here. It's going to go all the way across, but we're going to make it look like it's two pockets and then we're going to sew a line down the middle to turn it into two pockets. Now what she's doing is she's using regular zippers with the zipper stop with the metal. We are not doing that. We are using one big long zipper with two zipper pulls going in opposite directions. So I have cut this the length of the bag so that's good and then what we have to do is we have to make these little zipper tabs so we're gonna have tabs on the end and then we're gonna have like a fake tab in the middle okay so here's what I'm thinking is that we're not gonna put this in all the way that the tail of the zipper is just gonna go in part way and then we're gonna top stitch it in there so that this can be sewn into the seam without the bulk of the zipper. I hope that's gonna make sense for us here. And then if we do that, I'm gonna have to cut this down. So the question is, how much needs to be cut off in order for us to be at 15. 16 and a quarter. So I need to cut one and a quarter off of this zipper. Do it that way. One and a quarter off of here. Oh. No, not one and a quarter. That's where this needs to go to. 
in order for us to be at 15. No. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not cutting off too much because can't come back from that if we cut off too much. Okay. Now if I put this a little in Does that give us our 15? No. So I'm going to slide this out slightly until we get to 15. Yes. Okay. So that's where we need to be with these ends. Once we sew these ends down, then we're going to go back and measure the middle to make sure that the middle's in the right place. Because we can move the middle, if we were to sew this down, this is where we would be. We would not be in the middle anymore, so that's why we didn't sew it down yet. I was just about to say that I've never seen anything like this before and then I remembered when we made the Davina bag we did something very similar with the piece in the middle but for the Davina bag the zippers went all the way to the outside and for this one we're doing the tabs which I think look cleaner uh, it's less bulky especially in a seam like this where I had um, cork and the zipper so I'll have to think about that if I make another one of these, that that's a good, a good trick to do. Ta-da! So we have all this stitched down, as you can see. So that just gives us like a nice, firm bottom here, which is what we want. Um, which means I didn't really need to put all that stuff down there originally because I forgot that it gets sewn on top of the bottom. Hey friends, so I wanted to give you an update on the Segway shawl. So here's where we're at so far. We're adding in the second color now. The second color is going to be very similar to the first. So here's where we are. Basically it goes from double crochet down to half double. So it kind of has this uh, thinning effect to it. So it's very cool. So we're adding in the second color. You can kind of see the change in color. It's super subtle especially between these first two skeins. Uh, the next few skeins will be a little bit more, I mean subtle, but still you'll be able to tell the difference in the color. So I really have to count with this. It's hard because you've got like this part of the wing and then you've got to make sure that these ends are all even, like how far out you go or how far you step stool you go is all even <clears throat> so that's um, I'm just trying to be really careful because the first time I made this I messed up the counting somewhere and so I don't want to do that again on this one uh, so I'm really kind of like counting to make sure I have the right number for each row and I darkened the hair a little too dark it's too dark now so I'm going to wash it a few times today, kind of strip out some of the darkness. Uh, I should have just gone for the other color to make it more red, and instead I went for the dark red. So, it's typical Heather. Um, I'm also hoping to do my nails this afternoon, just have like a whole beauty day. Uh, so. Thank you.
Okay, we are all done. I made those D-ring connectors a little too thick, almost broke a needle. So I went ahead and did not top stitch over them because I kept breaking the thread and it just wasn't gonna happen, so. There we go, we've got our bag and our snap and I'm gonna put our connector, I mean our handle on here. Yay! Super cute! So I really like this one. I'll just have to make a note to myself about the connectors for future, but I really like it. I really like it in the denim. I just think it adds a really nice touch. This bottom panel adds a nice touch with the quilting. It's just really pretty. You're not seeing a whole lot of fabric on this one. Uh, just a peak of fabric, but very pretty. And then we have our mustard fabric on there and in the interior. So very cool. I don't think I like the Decor Bond. I think I would rather use Decoville in the future. The Decor Bond is just, for some reason, doesn't want to stick. And the Decoville light <coughs> is a lot easier to work with. So I have a whole a whole bolt of decor bonds, so that's not good for me, but <laughs> that's where we're at with that. So yay, another pattern done. And what time is it? It's 3.30. This was pretty fast too. I don't know if it's just I'm getting into a groove faster or if the bags I'm picking are easier. I'm not sure. 345. So 575. I don't know that I've priced this one yet. I'll have to look at the other bags that take around that time. We're probably looking at. I think I did price this one already because I did sell one of these on the website. So I have priced one of these. So I will go back and look at what that price was. I don't think it was as high as the $60 bags, but I can't remember. So, yay, we'll check that one off. And then I've picked out the three patterns for the possible giveaway. So, hopefully I will reach 500 in the next couple of days before we start our next video. And we can do the giveaway bag in that video. So, that would be fun. And, yeah, I think that's it, so. Just going to enjoy the rest of my day with my crochet project. And hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Are you working on any projects? Do you have a crochet project on the go? Or knitting or cross stitch or English paper piecing or anything like that? Do you have any fall crafts that you're excited about? Put it down in the comments. I want to find out what you're working on. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for coming along with me on the journey. Let's take a look at our finished Alice purse. So pretty. So we've got that top fabric and then the two zippers and we've got the handle and the adjustable strap. So this is detachable if you just want to use the handles. And then we've got our inside mustard grunge with a, another zipper area on the inside. So I forgot how cute this tote is. I really like this one. I think this is the perfect size purse for most people because it's just versatile with the two different kinds of handles and it's big enough to fit like a file folder in so you could use it as like a work bag but it's also just big enough to put all your normal purse stuff in. So it does have a magnetic snap instead of a zipper closure. So I know that doesn't work for some people. I'm fine with the magnetic snap, especially when the bag stands up on its own. Um, but I know like if you have a cat that likes to root through your bag or you're just worried about spilling the contents of your purse, then the magnetic snap isn't gonna work for you. But uh, I understand that and I do have other purses that have you know the zipper closure. But here's another option for you. And I love the little quilted bottom to it. I really like making this with the uh, with the denim. 
I have a few other fabrics picked out to make this bag in and I've only got the dark denim so I've got I've got like a blue gray real denim fabric this dark one and my lighter one are more of a cotton than a lint than a true denim fabric so I might want to order some more lighter denim to make these with but yeah I really like them with the denim so very excited for this one I really just forgot how great of a bag it is and it's a perfect size and yeah I really like making this one we also have our Wonder Cardigan off the off the blocking boards. So we've got the top and the bottom. Oh, so um, so for these stripes, I couldn't make them as tall for the top ones as the bottom ones. But looking at this right now, they both look similar, so that's good. So it definitely stretched out with what we did. So I think it's going to be a perfect size anyway. So now what we need to do is we need to seam these together to make our sleeves. Yeah, I mean it comes down to my waist. It I wasn't didn't want it under my butt anyway, so that's good. So yeah, it's very cute. Um, and I did I just looked through my yarn stash to see if I had anything that would go with this since I'm fairly certain we're not going to have enough of yarn of our little scraps of this to go and I decided to steal one of those rainbow minis that I was going to use. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a very mottled purple. So it's more plum than the purples that are in here but I think it ties in nicely I don't know if you can see that with the um, the purple that's in the tan one. So we'll give it a try and see. I'll start with the other yarn and see how far I get with that before I resort to this. But I think we have about six rows, so we have to seam up the sides, and then we've got six rows of a cuff for both cuffs. So that's 12 rows I need to figure out yarn for. <coughs> I also did my nails. So these are more of the press-on nails. It's just this really pretty blue color. So enjoying that, and I've got my spooky earrings on for spooky season. As always, I want to thank you for coming and spending time with me under the lemon tree. I love to see you every week, to see those, um, those views. <laughs> I love to see those numbers every week and know that you're all enjoying my videos. And next year, we won't necessarily be experimenting because we've done all of our research and development. So next year will be more of us actually hitting the ground, hitting the pavement, and making some stuff. <laughs> so I'll be doing more of the multiples of things. The piggies have gotten a big response so far. So I've ordered more fat quarters to make the piggies with, and I need to order more zippers. So maybe over the um, winter break, we can make some zippers, uh, zippers. We can make some piggies in anticipation of the spring craft fairs, and I'll have to find a few of those to sign up for as well. Yay! It's all happening! <laughs> so uh, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, and I hope to see you back here next week. Love you, friends! Bye! Bye.